Hey everybody, what's going on and welcome to Guns N' Roses Central and I want to do an episode of Guns N' Roses True Story and I want to talk about the gig that Guns did at Slane Castle back in Ireland in 1992. So it's almost the 25th anniversary. The 25th anniversary was pretty much last week but you know it was May 16th of 1992 and let's talk about what happened at that gig and around the time that Guns actually went to Ireland. So Guns N' Roses arrived in Dublin on May 14th, two days before the gig, at 7.15 on their private jet. So they've been delayed for five hours in Los Angeles because of radio problems on the airplane. And the crew had actually already been in Ireland for over a week setting up the stage and getting the gig ready. And as soon as Guns N' Roses landed, four stretch limos basically waited to ferry the band to their luxury Berkeley Court Hotel. And despite the secrecy surrounding the band's arrival, several fans, one journalist, and even a photographer were waiting for them. And a smiling Axel Rose rewarded them. And he was spotted actually wearing a Nirvana hat. So this was like before that whole, you know, Nirvana and Guns N' Roses feud really exploded. I've got another video coming on the whole Guns N' Roses and Nirvana controversy. So you guys can stay tuned for that. The following day, Axel smiling once again again with a stubbled face made the front page on the Irish Independent. Other newspapers and magazines, however, were more concerned about whether the good Catholic girls of Ireland bare their breasts on the video screens at the concert, a trend that had been happening at the band's recent American shows. And while Axel would make preparations for tomorrow's show, the rest of the band sped through the Irish countryside for a sound check at Slane Castle, which is about 30 miles north of Dublin. So, set in a natural amphitheater on the curve of the River Boyne, with a castle on the hill at the left of the stage, it's one of the most beautiful venues on the band's European schedule. So the sound check lasted for about two hours until everyone was satisfied and the inflatable beast is let out of the cage for the first time. Later that night Slash went to go check out the girls in their ball gowns en route to the Trinity Ball which was basically the social highlight of the year in Dublin. And on May 16th the press reported that around 800 police which was basically one-tenth of Ireland's police force would be patrolling the Slane Castle site. But apart from the drunkenness and minor drug offenses, there really were no problems. They had a little village of Slane, which is close to the actual venue, was about 1,200 people. They had to totally seal it off to traffic as thousands of bandanaed fans blocked the main and only street, drinking and dancing to the ad hoc bands that seemed to spring out of nowhere. And... Because U2, of course, is from Ireland, they actually sent a crate of 40-year-old Irish whiskey and a barrel of Guinness to the band. And funny enough, years later, the same thing happened when Slash was playing Ireland with his band, uh, with Miles Kennedy and the Conspirators. U2 had actually sent a welcome case of Guinness when Slash was playing Dublin. Now, of course, in 2014, Slash was sober and he no longer drank. And Slash laughed the whole thing off. So Slash touched down the Irish capital for a show at the Three Arena on November 10th and waiting for him was a case of the black stuff courtesy of U2 but as you guys know Slash has steered clear of booze since 2006 admitting he's a recovering alcoholic so he took to Twitter to say many thanks to U2 for the welcome to Dublin case of Guinness the only thing I miss about being sober and in order to get the band to the actual venue the band used a 24 seat Sikorsky helicopter uh, to basically bring them to the site at 4 p.m. The helicopter circled around the actual crowd three times so that everyone in the actual helicopter could take pictures of the 50,000 crowd gathered below. Now noticeably absent from this helicopter ride was their singer Axl Rose. Axel was taking his own private helicopter to the venue but Axel didn't show up until an hour later so the band went on stage about an hour late. And the Irish Times did an article about the upcoming gig at Slane Castle in 2017. And they actually interviewed the Slane Castle owner, a fellow by the name of Lord Henry Mount Charles. And he recalled the 1992 gig that Guns N' Roses did and some of the uneasiness that happened. So at Slane in 1992, a rest of crowd started making human pyramids and threw beer on stage as they whiled away the long hours while they waited for the band. At one stage, I had to admit that I was concerned that there might almost be a riot, he said. My oldest son and I went to Slash and told him the band had to go on stage. We discovered that Axl Rose wasn't even on site. He was still in the hotel suite in Dublin. Their manager was backstage fishing. Axel got into the chopper and I got him down here as fast as he could and credit where credit is due. When they went on stage they really turned it on but there was a lot of stuff going on in the background. And the actual opening band for Guns N' Roses was a band called My Little Funhouse who had been recently signed to Geffen Records. They opened the show and they were followed by Faith No More and Matt Duff and Slash actually went fishing by the river while they were waiting for Axel to get ready and they had their photographs taken in front of the castle. And while waiting for Guns N' Roses, kids in the audience actually amused themselves by building human pyramids with the top figure giving a quick moon before losing his balance. 
And at the same time, the police were actually scouring the crowd with binoculars, vainly searching for bared breasts. Now, during the actual concert, Axel remarked, playing in sunshine, it's a new concept. So a lot of the European shows that Guns played as part of this leg of the tour were actually played, at least they started when it was sunlight out and they ended, you know, when it was dark. And Axel attempted to make some Irish heritage connections on behalf of the band. He said, we have a McKegan in the band, in case you hadn't noticed, and I'm half Irish myself, but you can't tell, right? And then later on, Duff would sing the Misfits song, Attitude. Basically, Duff unraveled a new microphone cover and rolled it on. And Axel said, much as I love Duff, I would never share a condom with him, he joked. And this concert also featured the first documented performance of Guns N' Roses playing It's All Right, just as the intro to November Rain. And... Just before the band played Sweet Child of Mine, they played a little bit of the song by U2. Uh, they played the song One. And as Knocking on Heaven's Door reached its peak, Duff was so excited, he actually leapt into the crowd and nearly knocked himself out. And then as the last strains of Paradise City echoed across the Boyne Valley, Slash thanked the crowd for making us so welcome. You've been effing great, he said. And later on, Slash was actually quoted as saying how pleased he was to be in Dublin. He said, I can always tell a drinking town when the people in the bar get drunk before I do. Now, the the following day, uh, the actual Guns N' Roses show made three front pages in the newspapers in Ireland. The Sunday World Review is headlined Burns and Roses with appropriate mooning pictures. And Sl Slash ended up going out to sample some traditional Irish hospitality at Howth Island. And there was a mass trip to McDonald's to ward off the first sign of homesickness. Following the gig in Ireland, Guns N' Roses then flew to Prague in Czech Republic uh, to play what would have been the band's first show in Czechoslovakia at that time. And this is a set list that Guns N' Roses played at Slane Castle, according to setlist.fm. So it's a bit shorter than what they've been playing on the reunion tour. You know, there's some great songs I'd love to see them bring back. You know, Bad Obsession. They played, um, uh, you know, pretty much everything else that you see on the set list they've been playing, you know, night after night as part of the reunion tour. Now, if you guys want to watch the f most of the concert, Paradise City, for some reason, is missing, at least in this video clip I found on YouTube. It's up on YouTube. It's a fan shot show, and it's good enough that you guys can still probably enjoy it. It ends after knocking on Heaven's Door, and then there's also a news uh, report from 1992 that unfortunately doesn't really show any pro shot footage, but just talks about the gig and all the fans trying to come in. I've linked to that down below as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Guns N' Roses True Story. Hopefully it gets you pumped up for this week as Guns N' Roses kick off their European leg of the Not In This Lifetime tour. Thanks for watching, guys. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the contents of this video. And be sure to hit the subscribe button if you love Guns N' Roses as much as I do. And be sure to follow me on social media. The links to my social media channels are down below in the description box too. Thanks.